Hi, I'm Alan. Welcome to 72 Hours. In this episode, we're going to go over a bug out bag or a 72 hour kit. Um, actually, the federal government, FEMA, recommends that each citizen has an emergency kit in case of a disaster. In these kits, you have things of like making fire, water, shelter, communication. In situations like we just had with Sandy, having a bag like this means you can leave your house or your vehicle and get to a place of safety. Now, we're going to be going over the contents of what's in my bag. Now, this bag on me is 33 pounds. It has everything I need to survive for three days and even longer. All right, this is what's in my bug out bag. Now, there are four basic things that you need to keep in your survival bag that it comes into this. Fire, shelter, water, and cutting tools. Depending on the time of the year, different ones have different priorities because this is the fall and it's getting cold out. I would say it would be fire, shelter, water, then food. You can live a lot longer without food than water. In the summertime, it would be water, fire, shelter, then cutting. It's just based on your climate. You need to keep warm and you need to keep sheltered. The first thing we're gonna go over is water. There's a lot of debate how much water you should truly carry. I've been, t I've been researching it could be a liter per day or a gallon per day. It depends on your climate. I live in New England where there is plenty of water supply. I opted for a little less water because a gallon of water weighs eight pounds. And really, three gallons of water, that's a lot of poundage in your pack. I opted for a little bit less because there's plenty of water where I live or where I'm bugging out. In my pack, I carry two quart canteens and two 16 ounce bottles. The reason I have the 16 ounce bottles is when this is empty, I can cut the top off, I can put a handkerchief or sock in there, and then I can fill it with gravel, with stone, and if I have a fire, I can take some of that charcoal and put it in there and make a homemade water filter. It gives me plenty of options. Also too, purifying water is an important thing to do. I just showed you one method. You can also boil it. You should always boil your water before you drink it because you don't know where it is. You also have other options too of killing bacteria. I have two options here. I have these chlorine tablets that you can use to purify water. And then I have bleach in a bottle. Be surprising, a couple of drops of bleach will actually kill a lot of stuff and you can drink it. This gives me multiple ways of purifying. I have the tablets, the bleach, the boiling, and I can make a homemade filter. That gives me three options. With anything, you wanna have three ways of doing it. Now we're gonna go over food. In this kit right here, I have roughly close to 3,000 3, to 3,600 calories. Don't quote me on it, but this is enough food to last at least two to three days. I have everything from span singles, dried fruit, granola bars. I've got Gatorade for extra electrolytes, more power bars, some jerky. Uh, I have some pepperoni. Here is a split MRE. It is a vegetable, it's a chicken stew noodle. And that comes with peanut butter, different drink mix, cheese spread. I also have here oatmeal that you can heat up. I also have uh, powdered milk and hot chocolate. When you've had a bad day, there's nothing like a good hot chocolate by a campfire. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is cutting tools. I like to be redundant. I have more than three cutting tools because you never know when a knife breaks or you need a sharp knife. We're gonna go over my main cutting tools first. I have a small K-Bar X. This was made in the 50s. What's nice about this, it's lightweight and it's a full tang. You're not worried about the handle ever breaking, but it's not gonna give you the power to chop through big logs. That's why I carry a tomahawk. Um, they can be used for throwing, it can be used for self-defense, it also can be used as a workhorse chop. I can chop a bigger tree with this than this, but it gives me a backup tool in case one of these is lost or broke. For knives, I carry three. The first one I carry is a Mora Light My Fire. It's from Sweden. It's a very sharp knife. It's actually the sharpest knife I've ever bought out of the box. And it has a built-in fire steel. If you need to start a fire, you can do that. It's great to have that. And I put 550 cord on there in case I need it. And I have emergency whistle on it in case I get lost. Second thing I have is a Swiss Army knife that has, a, it has all kinds of tools, a can opener and other stuff. It also has redundancy again, a saw. Same thing with my Leatherman. It has some of the same things. It also has a leather punch and it has another saw. It also has a file in case I have to fix my blade or take the nicks out. Redundancy. I also carry 
one of these pocket chainsaws. It's lightweight and it's gonna get through a bigger branch than these other saws. All right, I also carry a couple razor blades. You never know when you need something really sharp really quickly. All right, now we're gonna go over. Let's go through shelter. The most important thing is having to stay warm. The first thing I have, if you look on the ground in the background, is my green military blanket. I chose to go with wool because wool is a great fiber. Even when it's wet, it, can, it will hold 80% of your body heat soaking wet. There is no other man material for the price and the value that you can do with wool. Also too, if you're really close to a fire to keep warm, a spark or ember is not gonna set it on fire. That's why I like wool. Now that is my main blanket in my bag. Now I have other options in here that are cool too. First thing I wanna show you is my SOL emergency bivy. It is basically a trash bag sleeping bag. What's great about this, it will keep 90% of your body heat. What you do with this, you get in this and put your wool blanket and it will keep you warm. Now I have other options. I've got a uh, Mylar space blanket as another backup. Same, similar, but it's just a big sheet of tin foil that will keep your body heat in. I also have this poncho that can be shelter or a bed or the same thing. Another thing too is you should always carry trash bags. You can use it for shelter. What else you can do with trash bags is you can fill them up with leaves, put them on the ground, and build an insulating between you and the floor, and that's awesome. Now what I have for my main shelter is I've got this SOL emergency blanket. It's also a space blanket, but it also has grommets that I can build my shelter. It has a reflecting tarp. You see the guy right there is when you have your fire, the heat will reflect up there and reflect back on you, and that's the key. Now what else I got is another poncho in case you need it, a hammock because I hate sleeping on the ground, and sometimes you want to be off the ground if it's been raining. I also have this laundry bag. I could use this for anything I want to hang stuff, or I can make a makeshift pillow out of it because who hates sleeping on the ground without a pillow? All right, this covers shelter. The next thing we're gonna go into is we're gonna go into fire starting. Like I said, redundancy is the key. I have multiple ways of making fire. First, I have waterproof matches with some tinder. Basically, it's a cotton ball with wax on it. Some waterproof matches and the striker in there. I have regular matches that you get at the convenience store that I just wrapped in paper and cellophane just to have. I also have my Swedish fire steel. I also have, and I'll show you, a magnesium bar. Basically, you take the knife, you scrape, and you get a little pile, and then with that little pile, it will ignite. It helps when it's really wet out. The magnesium will work even when wet. I also have two lighters because it's a lot easier with a lighter. I've got some cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. It will take a spark from the magnesium bar or the Swedish fire steel. I also have a char box. A char box is you take cloth and you put it in a little tin with a little hole and you put it in your fire. It will starve most of oxygen and it will turn black. And what's great about that is if it's black and when it's all starved of oxygen, you take, all you have to do is put a spark on it and it will catch. That is what's great, because you have a bandana, you have socks, you have a t-shirt, you can always make a fire starting. Like I showed you earlier, I have a fire starter in my main knife, and one second, I do have one more fire thing in my flashlight. I also have, water, uh, I have a tinder bundle and waterproof matches. I have multiple ways of making fire, even if I don't have matches. All right, I think the next thing we'll go into is lights. It's important to see in the dark. The first thing I'm gonna show you is my Gerber Bear Grylls Survival Flashlight. It's not the most powerful flashlight, but I do like it. You turn the handle and the light comes on. Um, the burn time on this, I hear, is about 20 hours, and it takes a single AA battery. That is really good. As you saw a second ago, it has a storage compartment to hold matches. You could also opt to take the matches out and put a battery in there as a backup. But I do like this because it's a waterproof thing. If it's raining, you drop it. This will always work. My second thing is, sometimes when you're working on things at night, you need to have a headlamp. I have just a basic headlamp that you put on your head, and I'll show you. I'll take off my hat. When you're doing crafting or starting fires, it's great to have a fire, be able to start a fire when you can see. The third thing I have is a combination tool. This is great. This is a flashlight. It is a radio. 
And I get FM, AM, and a weather band as a thing right there. What else is good? It's hand crank. This will always work even if my batteries are dead in my flashlight. The second great thing too, it has a USB port and headphone jacks. Um, if I have my cell phone with me, it will hold, it will dump a charge in there, or I can charge a charge. That gives me options if I'm out and my and my phone is not working. It's a great tool. I think the next thing we'll go over is let's see uh, reading materials that I have. That's important. I carry two books in my bug out bag in case I need a situation. The first one is Grubby Times. Like great living in grubby times. This book talks about how to survive situations during riots, how to deal with getting out of places, being concealment. It's kind of a black ops book. It's written by a Green Beret. It gives you options if you're in a disaster and you want to stay away from people. Because when things happen, you get a lot of looting and you get a lot of crime because police isn't around. This book will help you avoid situations like this. The second one is Everybody's Knife Bible. What I like about this, with a knife, it shows you how to make fire, how to make a compass, how to navigate. It gives you how to make uh, furniture with just your basic knife. I kind of like that. And having these two books gives me options if I come across something I need to do. Also in a bag, you might want to have some extra clothing. I have minimum because I've got a small pack, but I keep an extra pair of socks. Always good to have socks. I keep an extra long sleeve shirt when it gets cold out. And I have two I have a pair of military light thermals. They're like Under Armour. They keep you cool in the summer and a little bit warm in the winter. And I have two bandanas. You can use it as head covering. You can use it for char cloth. You can also use it for filtering water. They have many uses for bandanas. The next thing we're going to go over is fishing kit. Simple thing, hooks, line, a fishing spear for you to be able to fish. Also for hunting, I have a pencil wrapped in wire, and that's just for using for snares and trying to trap animals. Very, very, uh, very simple. Another thing you should have is cordage. I prefer 550 cord. I have about 75 feet of this stuff. What's great about this is it has inner strands. You've got a main strand here and you've got individual ones. You can break this up for sewing, for making shelter, for fishing, and for any other thing, 550 cord. I also have it wrapped on my knife and I have it on multiple tools as landers. It gives me more options to tie stuff or to make line or to fix or repair things. Always keep some good cordage. In every kit you should have a first aid kit. It depends on your level of training and what you feel comfortable with. Some people carry little, some people carry more. I keep in the middle and everything from a light wound to a trauma wound. All right, I'm gonna show you what I got here briefly. Um, I have Quick Clock. I love Quick Clock because if you've got a wound that will not stop bleeding, this will stop and stop the hemorrhaging really quickly. The military makes a version of this. Great. I have a military bandage. This is for a huge wound, like a gunshot, stab, or any other puncture wound. And then I got gloves, iodine, triple iambotic, hydrogen cortisone, allergy medicine, diarrhea medicine, aspirin. I have Steri strips for stitches. Pretty much typical first aid kit, gauze. Uh, medical scissors, a, a pair of trees. Most people don't realize when you have a wound, sometimes you gotta trim it. And having a tool like this to get rid of dead skin or to pull something out is very useful. People forget about that. And I guess the last thing we'll go over is my random items. Uh, du duct tape on a credit card. You never know when you need to repair something. Some super glue, fix it all. In case you gotta patch something, always useful. A diamond uh, sharpener to sharpen all my tools. Extra batteries for my, be uh, for my flashlight. A Sharpie. Bug spray. You don't understand how wonderful this is. I had this, didn't have this in my pack originally and regret it. Now I carry some. A mirror for grooming or signaling. Uh, a compass. And then in here, I have a bunch of Ziploc bags and a coffee filter. And the reason you have a coffee filter is you can use that to filter water or use it to start a fire. All right, this is everything in my 72 hour kit. Now, there's a lot of debate on what should be in a kit, but I think the basics should be fire, water, food, and cutting tools. 
and shelter. When you, if you have all that, you can build on top of it. But these are what I think is important in a bag. Each one of you have, and if you guys want to post comments about what you think is in your bag, or, uh, or do your own video of what's in your bag, we'd love to see it. Because there are ideas and techniques that I learn from watching other videos. Hopefully you can show me something. Alright, thank you for coming to 72 Hours and watching our show. Have a good day.